Yes, they have three of the best players on the planet and perhaps the deadliest attacking trio on paper in world football, but let's face it, PSG are never winning the Champions League. Huge statement we know, but the truth is that, in spite of their star-studded squad, PSG have never really looked like a team ready to conquer Europe. Now, if you're a PSG fan watching this and you're already getting mad, just take a deep breath, okay? In this video, we'll be telling you why we say your favourite Parisian club will not win the Champions League, and at the end of it, you'll probably agree with us. So, first of all, they're just not clutch. You can call it imposter syndrome, small club mentality or whatever, but one thing is obvious. When it comes to the big games, PSG just tend to capitulate. We saw it this season against Bayern, last season against Real Madrid, and even in the biggest game in the club's history, the Champions League final against Bayern back in 2020. In each of these games, when it mattered most, they just folded. That Champions League final, for example, it would have been better if they lost the game after putting up a good fight against Bayern, but they didn't. After doing so well to get to the final, the entire team, including the superstars, ended up looking ordinary against a Bayern team that was functioning below par that night. And bringing it right back up to the present, the fact that PSG could not seal top spot in their Champions League group just goes to prove the same point. They always start out well, but when it matters most, they fold. No team is ever winning the Champions League with this kind of attitude or mentality, because when the going gets tough, only the tough get going and PSG haven't proven that they're that tough. And then, to be still like this despite having serial winners in your team like Messi, Mbappe, Neymar and Ramos, that just makes the club look unsalvageable. Now that we've mentioned their names, let's just say it. Yes, they're amazing, but PSG's superstar front three might actually be doing them a great deal of harm. They're great, there's no doubt about that, but in those big games where the team is being dominated, none of them is usually very willing to track back and help the team defend, and that almost always ends up affecting them. When you're under pressure, it's always very helpful when your attackers come back to lend a hand to the defence and the midfield. We see it at Real Madrid, Barcelona, Bayern, City, all the big clubs do this, but PSG? Nah. Not so much. And the thing is, in the Champions League, you won't always dominate possession. So when you're under pressure from your opponents, everyone needs to dig in and make sure that the team remains compact in order to soak up the pressure. But you don't get that so much from PSG, do you? And the thing is, the three guys up front are all superstars, so who's going to question them when they don't track back? Now normally, that would be the coach, but you see, that's another place the club has been getting it all wrong. Since the takeover, you can say that the best coach PSG have had was Thomas Tuchel. He was the one who got them to their first ever Champions League final, but apart from him, the recruitment in the coaching department has not been great. They hired Pochettino, who had never won anything as a manager, to lead the team. And somehow, they expected him to deliver the Champions League to them? How was that ever going to happen? Instead of a UCL trophy, what they got from him was an embarrassment in the round of 16 from Real Madrid. So, they relieved Poch of his duties and had the chance to bring in a serial winner in Zinedine Zidane, but they failed to take it. You would have thought that Zizou, who was, and still is, out of a job, would be motivated to take a job coaching the biggest club in his country of birth, a country where he's idolised and even worshipped as a footballing god to this very day. Also, we believe Zidane would maybe have been motivated by the prospect of closely mentoring France's biggest football star of the current generation. Honestly, there were many things PSG could have used to lure Zidane to Paris, but instead, they decided to go for another Marseille-born coach in Christophe Galtier. Now, don't get it twisted, we're not saying Galtier is a bad coach. He beat them to the Ligue 1 title with Lille in 2021 after all, but considering the trophy PSG wants so badly is the Champions League, the wiser option would have been to go for the coach with the outstanding pedigree in Europe, but they failed to do that and that decision is looking like it's going to cost them. Now, apart from winning, what a coach with a good pedigree gets you is control of the dressing room. Imagine having someone like Mourinho, Guardiola or Zidane as your coach. The players would be sure to respect him because of how much they have won in their career. Now, that control of the dressing room is what the likes of Tuchel and Poch struggled with, and it's already looking like Galtier has the same problem on his hands. There have always been too many big names in PSG's dressing room since the 2010s, and managing all those massive egos and keeping the peace is a huge task for any coach. Remember back when Neymar and Cavani fought over a penalty on the pitch? Years later, that is still happening at the same club. And then we also hear rumours of Mbappe now calling the shots following his mega deal. 
We hear he's the one who decides who stays and who leaves the club now. We still don't know how true that is, but it's definitely not how to run a club. We've seen clashes between teammates one too many times at PSG this season alone. On one of those occasions, it reportedly even got physical in the dressing room. How the hell can a team go on to be successful when they don't even function as a team? I mean, individually, PSG players seem to be in the form of their lives. Messi, Mbappe, Ramos and Neymar are already looking better than they were last season. And even the likes of Vitinha, Nuno Mendes, Danilo and Soler seem to be really stepping up too. But the team still seems to be struggling. The club needs to ask themselves why that might be. Sure, they'll most likely still win the league in spite of all this, but for a club that couldn't get past the round of 16 of the French Cup, even with all their superstars, it's hard to think that they'll be able to go all the way in the Champions League, which has gotten even more competitive this season. In addition to the regular favourites, Bayern, Madrid, City and Liverpool, the likes of Napoli, Benfica and Dortmund also seem like they're in great form and are ready to pull some shockers in the tournament. PSG don't seem to be very ready for any of this. Finally, there's also the question of the fans and how much pressure they put on the team. We saw the treatment that the team, particularly Messi and Neymar, received after the loss to Madrid last season. It was brutal. But then, can you exactly blame them? It's really frustrating having to push your team to win the ultimate prize year in, year out, but only end up being disappointed every time. It's hard to not feel like everything is a waste. And what really hurts, especially for the PSG fans, is that that feeling of disappointment will be coming back this season. Because yes, they do have three of the best players on the planet and perhaps the deadliest attacking trio on paper in world football. But let's face it, PSG are never winning the Champions League. But hey, if you have a different opinion or prediction, feel free to share it with us in the comments and let us know why you think PSG will win the Champions League. We'll be looking out for your arguments. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on the bell notification so you never miss out on new content and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.